title of the message is The Holy Spirit, Your Mentor. The Holy Spirit, Your Mentor. When I was, uh, well, for years, I asked the Lord for a mentor, for someone to teach me. I wanted, because I just felt, Lord, I don't know anything, you know. And the Lord said to me, I believe, I am your mentor. The Holy Spirit is your mentor. And I want to testify, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was 17. And uh, that was a while ago. I want to testify that there is no teacher like the Holy Spirit. There's no mentor like the Holy Spirit. He is par excellence. He is perfecto. He is perfect. He is the wisdom of God. There is no one like him. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Word of God, the Father, they are one. You talk about Jesus, you talk about the Holy Spirit. You talk about the Word of God, you talk about Jesus. You talk about the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. John 14, 25, Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I said to you. He has sent us the helper. When we are weak, he is strong. When we are sick, he is healing. When we are ignorant, he is knowledge. When we are foolish, he is wisdom. He is all in all. You know, the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. And some people think of the Holy Spirit as an energetic vibration, as falling down. We read in Isaiah 11.1 1, a prophecy. Then shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. It's talking about David. There shall come a rod, a branch. Jesus will come. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes nor decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The Holy Spirit was upon Jesus and they had never heard anyone teach and the wisdom, the counsel, the knowledge that came. Even when he was a young boy of 12 years of age in the temple, they were amazed. Where did he get this wisdom from, this teaching? Hallelujah. Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit upon us. He would send the promise of the Father. Behold, Jesus said, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. The anointing will give you wisdom. The anointing will instruct you. The anointing will teach you. If you go to school, university, college, whatever, you open a book, you listen to a teacher, but the anointing can come upon you and dwell in you like a cloud of glory and will teach you, instruct you. 
He is a mystery. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 8, the early disciples had received the word of God and had been baptized in water. Okay? They were doing well. But they had not received the Holy Spirit. Acts 8. But when the apostles who were in Jerusalem heard that the that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. Hallelujah. There are many Christians today, they've received the word of God, they've been baptized in water, but the Holy Spirit has not yet fallen on them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid, the apostles laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit. That, you know, you can be a good Christian, but you need to go from head knowledge to heart knowledge. You, you believe the scriptures, you do well. You can quote scriptures. You can, you can say this is the doctrine of our church. This is what the scripture teaches. And you do well. But the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between bone and marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God comes to the heart when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when you receive the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you're just reading a book, and it's a good book to read. But Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. They had received the word of God, but they had not received the Holy Spirit. They had been baptized in water, but they had not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, the spirit of wisdom and counsel, of teaching, of understanding, of knowledge comes upon you. Hallelujah. And then you have a divine, the divine mentor. People, uh, especially you know, 10, 20 years ago, used to talk a lot about having a mentor. And what do they call them now? Life coach. Having a life coach. I'll tell you, there is a coach with a capital C who will give you living life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He comes like a cloud. The spirit of wisdom comes upon you. And people say, well, I just know. I just know. Hallelujah. Last year, my grandson Isaiah is somewhere around. I went to South Africa and he kept saying, Mummy, I want to go to South Africa. <laughs> Last year, he was four years old and, and he's sitting in the back seat in his, high, in his car, car seat and he's talking about one of his mum, Sarah, best friends, Lilia. And he says, Lilia's going to have a baby. He's not been married long. And his he's going to be a boy and his name will be Isaac. How did he know that? She wasn't pregnant. I saw her Facebook post today. Isaac turned one month. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I just, I just thought it's a four-year-old just talking nonsense, you know, like. But they didn't know what he'd said, but they named him Isaac. I know. Like, like Isaiah, my grandson, he just knows things. See, that's when the Holy Spirit comes. And you might be four years old, and you, what do you know? But you know. And when my grandson Isaiah is like that, you can't argue with him. He just knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, what I'm trying to say to you is that you can gain head knowledge, but without wisdom. 
the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge comes upon you. When I was pastoring uh, back, I don't know, um, we were fitting out a new building and uh, the Lord gave us air conditioning and uh, the manufacturer, Mitsubishi, said it wasn't sufficient for the building. And I said, Lord, big air conditioning, free. And I, you know, I didn't do the scientific empirical research on this air conditioner. A cold breeze crossed my face. And with that, we put it in. And the thing worked. Hallelujah. The thing worked. I had knowledge that someone else didn't have. Amen. Are you with me? The Holy S You see, there's a wisdom of this world, but there's a higher wisdom. There's the counsel of this world. And you can receive what appears to be very good counsel about your finances, investment, do this, do this with your life, can seem very good. But there is a wisdom that is higher than man's wisdom. Have you received the Holy Spirit? 1 John 2.20 But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Paul said that he judges all things and he's rightly judged by no man. That's the anointing. Paul walked in that type of anointing where he knew. He knew. He was in that place where he could judge the physical world from the spiritual world. And he was in that place where, as an apostle, he was right, rightly judged by no one. Lots of people were accusing him, making allegations, but he knew his place in Christ. 1 John 2.27 But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. You see, it's good to have counsel, but sometimes... We go running around seeking advice and you don't need that advice. You're seeking human advice when the Holy Spirit is genuinely speaking to you, advising you. Hallelujah. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. The anointing will teach you to abide in Christ. The anointing will teach you to stay in him. The anointing will teach you righteousness. Thank you, Lord. So God's wisdom is unique and it's different from this world. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. There's another wisdom, a counsel that man doesn't understand. But the sinner who rejoices in the pleasures of this life does not understand. You know, some people, they hate tithing. They hate giving. It's like, why would you give to the church? But they don't understand that there's a higher wisdom. That if we will honour God with our finances, he will pour out such blessings that we cannot contain. There is a higher wisdom. He, will, he says in Malachi that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour down such blessing that you cannot contain. And people think you're, 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 you're crazy. You know? Like when the Holy Spirit teaches you things, people think you're nuts. You know, one of the weapons that the Lord gave me was Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
but th people think I'm nuts breathing on people. But it was the wisdom of God that's foolish to man, but it's the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. People think you're nuts. You know, they think, what, what are you doing that for? Why are you shaking? You know, but they don't understand. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom of God, which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Hallelujah. This wisdom is ancient. Modern wisdom is passing. We need him because we are weak, foolish and ignorant. That's the truth. The foolishness of God, Paul says, is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Some of the things that God does will seem like foolishness to the world. But God doesn't need to impress the world. He's not trying to. He's God. He was, he is, and he always will be. Hallelujah. He will do whatever he wants to do. You need his wisdom. You need the Holy Spirit to be your teacher, your mentor. So position yourself to receive wisdom from God. Many times people come to these meetings and they want counsel. They want direction for their life. They're not hearing from God. Position yourself to receive his wisdom. One way of doing that is to come before him empty-handed. Lord, you are wise, all wise. I don't have a clue. Lord, I need you. Help me. Teach me. Show me what to do. Lord, I am weak. You created me. I'm coming to you, the creator God. Now help me, guide me, give me wisdom. Lord, even if I don't know what I'm doing, take control, absolute control of my life. Have your way. Position yourself in humility before God because God gives wisdom to the humble. It's the sinner who gets saved when they repent. The sinner who humbles himself gets the wisdom that he needs to repent, to be saved. You with me? I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. When you take the attitude that you know what you're doing with your life, and you will talk to God when you really need it, but otherwise you're in control, that's what you call pride before God. And so God may well distance himself from you, may well distance himself from you, allowing you to use your human wisdom when you could have good biblical success with the wisdom of God if you humbled yourself. During COVID, we would set up our tech stuff and it seemed like everything would go wrong. We had online meetings. And so I learned you have to pray before setup. If you want to have internet, if you, if you don't want everything to go wrong, you need God's help. And it was good for two years. Problems. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So... Whatever we do, come to God. Position yourself. Lord, you are my master. I'm your servant. Teach me. Show me. I'm relying upon you. The wisdom of God comes to believers, to those who put their faith in Jesus Christ. I'm sick, Lord. I don't know what to do. I'm relying upon you. Hallelujah. I need you. Don't rely on man. Do 
Jeremiah 17, Cursed is the man who relies upon man who makes flesh his arm. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Wisdom begins with trust. Position yourself in trust. Hallelujah. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You humble yourself before God, he'll give you the wisdom to prosper you. Amen? He'll give you the wisdom to have good success. You see, there is a devil and there are demons. And they want to rob your life. That's, you need heavenly wisdom, spiritual wisdom from heaven so that you can conquer. People want to succeed in this life. But you can really only succeed, truly succeed in the spiritual realm. It has to happen there first. You get heavenly wisdom what to do. The Lord knows what the demons are up to. The trouble is you don't half the time. That's why you need his wisdom to overcome. Once you have the wisdom, you'll see your, you know, the plans of God for your life being revealed and true prosperity and blessing. Amen? Because you're not relying on yourself. Because your human wisdom is not sufficient against the plans and strategies of the enemy. They want to rob your finances, ruin your marriage, all this type of stuff. And, you know, like, like, like Di Diane. Was it Diane or Diana? Diane, who shared. You know, she's telling her husband she's going to divorce her, walk out on him. The kids are petrified. They're going to lose their mum. You know, you could go to marriage counselling with a secular person and they say, well, just get divorced, you know, or whatever they say. Go into the anointing. Amen. Her problem was spiritual. It could only be healed, delivered by the wisdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So for the Holy Spirit... To be your mentor and teacher, you have to understand his priorities because his ways are not your ways. You want wisdom about what you should do with your life the way that you want it, but his ways and his priorities are, are different. His first priority in your life is the kingdom of God. That's his first priority. So how to receive the wisdom of God? is die to yourself, your plans and what you want and put first the kingdom of God. Then the Holy Spirit will work with you. The Bible says, he who is wise wins souls. Now, the world's not going to tell you that that's wisdom, but that's the kingdom of God. You're seeking first his kingdom by spreading the gospel. That's, see, when the Holy Spirit comes to advise you, these are his priorities. The gospel, salvation of souls. Another priority, sorry, that verse was Proverbs 11.30, he who wins souls is wise. Another priority of the Holy Spirit, okay, is to testify of Jesus Christ, to bear witness. Okay, but... These are his priorities in your life. You're like, God, give me wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. He's like, okay, I'll make you a witness. <laughs> but when the, the helper comes, Jesus said, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So the Holy, you've got to understand the Holy Spirit, what he does, he will turn you into a witness, a testifier. Hallelujah. And so you see the enemy in the schools, the public sector, hospitals, government, banning people from speaking about Jesus. But that's the Holy Spirit's top priority. Jesus said, John 16, 14, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Hallelujah. He will glorify me. So 
if you come to God wanting to be a secret Christian, you know what I mean? Wanting the world to like you and not wanting to be embarrassed by telling your testimony, you're going to the wrong person because he will give you boldness to speak about Jesus. All right? Look, there's a different wisdom in heaven. It's all about the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. Now, the Holy Spirit, you want wisdom. The Holy Spirit speaks through the word to discipline, correct you. Okay? All scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16, is inspired by God. Now, the word inspired literally means this. It's similar to the Hebrew word that God breathed into the nostril of Adam. It's been breathed into. It's full of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. All Scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching. Everyone say teaching. teaching. Reproof. Reproof. Correction. Correction. And for training in righteousness. You want to be mentored by the Holy Spirit, you need the Word of God. Amen. This is His sword. This is His teaching tool. Amen. So the wisdom of God and the word of God are the same. Now bind the word to your heart. You want God's wisdom, then immerse yourself in the word by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And Proverbs 6.20 says, My son, keep your father's command. Do not forsake the law of your, mom, your mother. Bind them continually. Everyone say Continually upon your heart so you need to be in the word I'm not putting legalism on you but you need to be in the word daily daily continually binding the word upon your heart because that's the wisdom of God all right never separate the Holy Spirit from the word of God never do that people who separate the word from the Holy Spirit and they're just like all Holy Spirit they end up being some sort of puff cream or something you know they're, they're just all full of puff you know and there's no foundation there's no strength of the word of God in their lives and they're off onto some fantasy imagination God spoke to me this and this and this the wisdom of God is here the wisdom of God is obey it don't just read it Obey it. That's God's wisdom. His wisdom is righteousness. People are in deception when they justify what they are doing, which is contrary to Scripture. You with me? And there's a lot of that going on. God told me to do this. For example, people say, I'm living with someone, but it's of God. He sent this man to me. It's fornication. And the devil sees what it is. It's fornication. And you can get a spirit of lust and completely wreck your life by living with someone. The same thing with same-sex relationships. You know, people make up doctrines from the Bible that it's okay. But one kingdom that's not deceived is Satan's. He knows you're in sin. You see, the righteous standards of God's word have been established for eternity in the heavens. And Satan knows when you sin. You can't justify in the spiritual realm whatever you're doing. You can justify it in the natural realm. You can justify it in church. But you can't justify it in the spiritual realm. The spirits know the righteous standard of God's word. Hallelujah. 
The wisdom of God is to absolutely trust him. Shall we go deeper? So I was sitting in a church and the pastor was saying that you have to stay in this church to keep your deliverance. You have to give your tithes here to keep your deliverance. That's called manipulation. That's called ungodly control. You with me? Don't be controlled and manipulated by man. God supplies for his work and God brings the people. Don't enter into this fleshly control of people trying to get them to do what you want. Similar with anger. Now we saw with Diane, the spirit of anger, using anger to control people. That's the only way they listen. You can justify it, but it's sin. It's sin. Be angry, but sin not. Which means you might get angry on the inside, but don't let it spew out of your mouth. Have some self-control. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, according to the scriptures, is to be content. Some people are like, well, God spoke to me about Bitcoin and, uh, you know, and how to make money and, and I'm having dreams and visions and how to be wealthy. You are feeding your greed. That's what you're doing. God told me how to become a millionaire. You're feeding the love of money and saying God's behind it. Repent. You're in deception. God told me to marry this man, you know. It's just your own fleshly, soulish desires. Hello? I've married this person. They're not a Christian, but the Lord led me to them. Do not be unequally yoked. That means don't marry someone who's not a believer. Come on. You want God's direction, here it is, but you don't want to obey it. Hello? That's his direction. Sometimes it's painful to follow it, but it will lead to sure blessing. The wisdom of God equals the righteousness of God. They're the same. You cannot be blessed in your sin. The blessing of God is through the blood of Jesus shed for sinners in repentance. Amen. The wisdom of God is the love of God. God is love. The wisdom of God is the fruit of the Spirit. You want God to mentor you and he is very interested in your heart, your heart attitudes, love, joy. Peace, patience, goodness, self-control. Did I leave one out? Faithfulness, thank you. My grandson's been learning it. And I keep forgetting one. Faithfulness, <laughs> hallelujah. This is the wisdom of God, that you be like Jesus. So often we want to know what, sh what do we do? And the wisdom of God is who are you? Who you are? your identity. Praise God. He works in you to purify you. Thank you, Lord. And God has divine strategies. Divine strategies. And he does, he, he, God is God and he'll do things differently. And it'll mean being different. People look at you and say, well, no one does that. You know, no one in your family has been called John. Remember that? So 2 Samuel 5.22, we're finishing up. Then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the valley of Ephraim. 
Rephraim. So once again, battle with the Philistines. David inquired of the Lord and he said, the Lord said, you shall not go up like previously in battle. Circle around behind them and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees. You see how God's wisdom is spiritual. When you hear the marching of the troops of heaven. Oh, glory. Why would you want to go head on against the enemy physically when you can have all of heaven marching? Well, some of heaven marching above the trees. Amen. Why would you want to control people, manipulate people, when you can have the resources of heaven at your disposal because you trust God? Why would you manipulate people for money when you can rely upon God as your supply? Then you shall advance quickly, for then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And David did so, as the Lord commanded him, and he drove back the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. Hallelujah. Victory, victory, victory. Praise God, praise God. Well, there's so much more I'd like to say. Amen. In the book of Acts, it says, and it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit. Don't be a lone ranger spiritually. God said this to me. God said that to me. You have been placed in the body of Christ. Listen to the Holy Spirit through other people. When people tell me, God told me this, God told me, I don't believe them. That's my first reaction. People who think they've always got a hotline with God. Often they're the people who have difficulty submitting in the body of Christ. They're full of their own thoughts. Sometimes they need deliverance. And their own thoughts get them into a lot of trouble. He's placed us into the body of Christ. It seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit. If you're wanting to do something and it doesn't seem good to anyone in the body of Christ, it probably is not good before God either. Amen? It seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit. Praise God. In marriage, does it seem good to us? and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Lord,